Now that your data is safe and secure, let's turn our attention to securing the site itself. Seriously bad things can happen if one of the darker elements of the web should gain access to your site. This could run from simple mischief, like deleting files, or redirecting to some undesirable site, to serious code hacks that might reroute your customer's credit card data into the hands of waiting thieves. Once again, a little diligence here goes a long way to provide a safe environment for both you and your customers. The first thing we'll look at is FTP access. Let's go ahead and go over to Dreamweaver, and I'll describe what we're looking for. Let's double-click on the site we've been working on, and go up to Servers, and then click Plus to bring up the dialog box that shows us the FTP information. And we'll be doing this whole process a little later, but here's what I want to show you. Your host will provide you with an FTP address, and then your FTP account will have a username and password. It's vitally important that this username and password be hard to guess. Maybe it'll be something easy for you to remember, but make sure it's hard to guess. Or make it something totally cryptic and then save it in a safe place if you should forget it. The important thing is, if anyone should guess this information, they'll have the exact same FTP access to your site as you do, and they can open your files and edit them as they wish and upload it and cause untold damage to your website. The other thing you should do is frequently change this username and password. Make sure you mark it on your calendar or do something to remind yourself so you do it on a regular basis. Because that way, if someone does gain access to this information, they won't continue to have it. Doing this makes sure that no one will gain access to your site and it secures your files and the functions that they perform. The next thing we'll talk about is a SQL injection attack. On a dynamic server, as we can see here in the URL, many times a URL will pass variables that the database or the application will do something with. That's the way they work. A SQL injection attack is someone can actually insert SQL code into that variable and run a script or a command on your database. Here we've seen that the command to drop table named products has been included. If a hacker should happen to guess the name of a table in your database and run this script and your site allows it to happen, you could go into work the next day and find all your products are gone off of your website and your site's throwing errors. So how do you prevent this? To prevent this, first be sure that your cart application properly filters URL variables to keep this from happening. And if you or another developer makes any modifications to your application, be sure that you don't inadvertently introduce this vulnerability yourself. For more information on this, because it's a rather large topic, you might want to just do a simple Google search on SQL injection attack. A lot of information is available out there that you can find out exactly what those are and what your site should be doing to prevent it. And then make sure your cart application adheres to those basic coding principles. Next, we look at an SSL certificate. First of all, what is it? Well, SSL stands for Secure Socket Layer. It's an encryption system designed to protect your data when it's passed across the web. In other words, your personal information and details like credit card information and such is scrambled at the server passed off to your browser, and then decoded and put back together on your end. What this does is it prevents anybody from intercepting this information in transit and then using it. What does it cost? It used to be very expensive, hundreds of dollars a year or more, but it's come way, way down. It can be had for as little as $10 a year. So that's hardly even an issue. How does it work? Let's go ahead and see an example. Here we have a site that sells SSL certificates, and we'll use this as an example to show how an SSL works. Okay, so let's say we're gonna go ahead and buy something. What I want you to pay attention to is up here in the address bar. Right now it just says www and then the URL. Let's go ahead and click on buy. And we say, okay, uh, this looks good. I'm gonna buy that. So I'll add it to my cart. Now notice up here in the address bar, it changed and there's an HTTPS. The HTTPS tells the server to invoke the SSL and that is so the server knows from this point forward the server is supposed to encrypt the data when it sends it off to your browser. If you click on the little lock you can see that the certificate information will show. So how do you put an SSL certificate on your site? Basically after acquiring the SSL from a vendor you're given access to your SSL encryption file. You take this file and you send it to your host and the host installs it for you. 